calculated gravitational potential energy up to now. So if you had the Earth and you had an object and they were separated by a certain distance, we've done things like calculating the gravitational energy of that system relative to, say, the surface of the Earth. We've chosen arbitrarily some kind of a zero reference level, which might be that level like right there. And what are we actually calculating when we calculate the gravitational energy using this equation? Energy what has stored? The system has stored. Where's it stored in the system? It's stored in this object? What's different about this object being up here than being down just sitting on the ground? Has the object itself changed at all? Good luck getting yeah. Does there have to be air there for it to be stored? No. It's stored between, the two. between the two in the gravitational, gravitational field. So what changes, what we're really calculating is how much energy, more energy gets stored in the field as a result of moving this object from, say, the ground up to its new position. To get the Earth and this object apart, because they're attracted to one another, requires us to put energy in. Where's the energy go? Well, it doesn't change this object or this object. It changes the space between them. And the energy gets stored in the field as a result of doing it. So technically, what we've calculated is a gravitational potential energy difference between being at the ground and being at this new position. It's the amount of energy we put in by virtue of pulling the two apart. What if I let go of that object at this point? What would it do? Accelerate. It would accelerate. How would you describe that in energy terms? What happens to the energy of the system? So the energy that was stored in the gravitational field now becomes kinetic energy of the two object system. The vast majority of the kinetic energy being stored in the motion of this guy. A little tiny bit and probably an immeasurable amount being stored in this guy because he's so massive he didn't go very fast. We've been treating it as if all of the kinetic energy ends up in here, right? Does it make sense that they're free to come together though? That both of them move? It's just that force doesn't cause this guy to speed up very much in the short amount of time that it acts because he's so massive. Well, we're going to use this term, capital V, not to represent volume from this point forward, but to represent something called potential or potential difference. And I'm going to put a subscript G to represent gravitational potential or gravitational potential difference. And gravitational potential difference is simply how much energy you put into the system. We could call that delta E, but I'm going to shy away from using an E because I don't want to confuse it with electric field. If we put the energy in through an external force, like I separate the object from the Earth, what would you call that? change in energy, the work we did. So we could say the work we do per unit mass. The potential difference between this object being at the surface of the Earth and being at this new location is how much energy we had to put in through working per unit mass. So what would we measure gravitational potential difference in? Joules per kilogram. 
So let's say that this point, let's call this position P, what's the gravitational potential difference between the ground and point P if the distance from the ground to point P is five meters? The gravitational potential difference would be the mass of the object times the gravitational field strength times how far it moved between the Earth and that point divided by the mass, right? So the first thing to understand is that the gravitational potential difference between the ground and this point five meters higher is just a number that doesn't depend on the object that you move, because it's not how much energy the object has, it's how much the energy of the, or, or that the system has, it's how much the energy of the system would change per unit mass in moving a mass between those two points. And if you move twice as much mass from the ground level up to that point, it would require twice as much energy input to the system. The system would store twice as much energy, but the ratio of energy change per mass would be the same. And so what is the gravitational potential difference between the ground and the point five meters above the ground near the surface of the Earth? 9.81 newtons per kilogram times five meters, which gives you what, 49.1 or something like that? Newtons times meters over kilograms, what's a newton meter? So that's 49.1 joules per kilogram. Now that really tells you a couple of things. It tells you how much you change the energy of the system by either how much you increase the energy of the system by lifting the object from ground to a point five meters higher. It also tells you how much kinetic energy the system would gain if the object were already five meters higher and you let go of it. So make sure, sense that by the time this object reaches the ground, that all of that <clears throat> gravitational energy would now be stored in the motion of the Earth and the object. And so we would have 49.1 joules per kilogram. How much total energy does the Earth object system have when the object is at point P. How much total energy does the Earth object system have when the object is, by virtue of that arrangement of particles, the Earth and the object, when the object is five meters above the Earth? But how would you get a number on it? How could you tell me how much energy that had? Well, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. You would have to know the mass because how much energy the system stores does depend on, turns out the masses of both objects, but the mass of the Earth is embodied in this number, isn't it? So you'd have to know the mass of the Earth. So if I asked you how much energy is in the Earth object system, well that's basically that equation, right? If they can only come back to that particular now, what we have to do to be able to take what we've been doing with energy comfortably up to this point in the gravitational case and port it over so that we understand the electrical case is to start by defining a new quantity called absolute potential. Now, when would the Earth object system, the Earth and this object, store the most possible gravitational energy? Again? When both objects are really massive and they're very far apart. But we've got a given object, Earth, a given other object. When would that system store the most gravitational energy? When that person at the end of the atmosphere. Just atmosphere? Is that the limit? As far away as possible. As far away as possible. In other words, if they were infinitely far from each other, even though 